In this video, we're talking about how to evaluate a limit using conjugate method. And conjugate method is something you want to use if substitution and factoring both don't work to evaluate the limit. In this particular problem, we've been given the limit as x approaches 4 of the function x minus 4 divided by square root of x minus 2. So you always want to try substitution first, which is where we just take the value that we're approaching and we plug it in. So here, if we use substitution, in the numerator, what we'll get is 4 minus 4 when we plug in 4 for x, so we get 4 minus 4, divided by square root of 4 minus 2. So when we simplify this, 4 minus 4 is 0. In the denominator, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So we end up with 0 over 0. Well, that's a problem right there because we can't divide by 0. This is called an indeterminate form. So anything where we have 0 over 0 or 0 times infinity, anything like that, infinity divided by 0, this is an indeterminate form. And when you use substitution and you get an indeterminate form, what it tells you is that you can't use substitution to evaluate the limit. So you're going to have to try another method. The next thing you always want to try is factoring, but we can see right away there's no way that we can factor this to simplify it. It's not like we have a polynomial in the numerator and denominator that we can factor and try to cancel one of the factors. So factoring isn't really going to work. So if both of those don't work, the next thing you want to try is often conjugate method. And conjugate method can be especially useful when you have a square root involved in your numerator or your denominator. And especially if you have something inside of a square root and then you have the sum or difference with another term. So here we have the difference because we've got subtraction. We have the difference of a square root and a constant term here. So when you've got something like that it should be a hint to you to try to use conjugate method. And it's called conjugate method because we're going to use the conjugate. Well the conjugate of something is just the same two terms but with a different sign in the middle. So for example the conjugate of a plus b would be a minus b. We kept the same two terms, we kept a and we kept b, we just changed the sign in between them from a positive to a negative. In the same way, if you have a minus b, its conjugate is a plus b. So with that in mind, if we have the square root of x minus 2, square root of x minus 2, the conjugate of that is going to be the square root of x, 2, we just flip the sign from a negative to a positive. So the conjugate of this is the square root of x plus 2. Now the reason that this is called the conjugate method is because the way that we're going to evaluate the limit is we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of this value. Now you might ask why wouldn't we multiply by the conjugate of the numerator because x minus 4 its conjugate is just going to be x plus 4. And while that's true it's helpful to multiply by the conjugate of the expression that involves the square root because when we multiply apply the square root by the square root, we're going to get the square roots to cancel out. So here's what that looks like. It'll become more clear as we work through the problem. So we're going to say the limit as x approaches 4, we're going to leave the numerator exactly as it is and the denominator for that matter, square root of x minus 2. But then we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator because the denominator is the term that involves the square root. So what we're going to do is multiply by the square root of x plus 2 divided by the square root of x plus 2. So notice that the conjugate of the square root of x minus 2 is the square root of x plus 2. We're multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by that value because if we take this second fraction here, square root of x plus 2 divided by square root of x plus 2, because the numerator and denominator are the same, this whole fraction reduces to 1. In the same way that if you have 7 divided by 7, that's going to be equal to 1. When the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction reduces to 1. So we're just multiplying this first function here, this first fraction, by 1. So we're not changing the value at all because multiplying by 1 doesn't change the identity of the original function. So we're not changing the identity, but this is still going to be useful to us because when we multiply across the numerator and denominator, watch what's going to happen here. So we're going to get the limit as x goes to 4, and then we'll multiply factors across the numerator, so we'll have quantity x minus 4 from the first fraction times quantity square root of x plus 2 from the second fraction. Then in the denominator, we'll actually FOIL it out. So we'll say the square root of x times the square root of x, well that's just going to be x. The square root of x times positive 2 is plus 2 times the square root of x. Negative 2 times the square root of x is going to be minus 2 root x. And then negative 2 times a positive 2 is a negative 4. And this is why conjugate method is so cool because notice here in the denominator now we have plus 2 times the square root of x 
minus 2 times the square root of x, well, those two terms are going to cancel with one another, and so all we're going to be left with is the limit as x goes to 4 of x minus 4 times quantity square root x plus 2 divided by, in the denominator, the only two remaining terms, x minus 4, so we have x minus 4. And now notice we have an x minus 4 in the numerator and an x minus 4 in the denominator. We can cancel those two. So that's only going to leave us with the limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of x plus 2, this single remaining factor right here. So notice how conjugate method reduced our function from this complicated quotient, this complicated fraction, to just the square root of x plus 2. So it makes it a lot simpler to evaluate. And at this point now, we can just evaluate using substitution. So we plug in x equals 4, and we get the square root of 4 plus 2. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 plus 2, which is 4. Therefore, the limit of this function as x goes to 4 is 4. And we couldn't figure that out just by using substitution from the beginning because we got this indeterminate form here. But when we were able to apply conjugate method and cancel out this factor, we could then use substitution to see that the limit was 4. And that's how you use conjugate method to evaluate a limit.